Hey beautiful loves, welcome back. I felt really cool to film this video this afternoon because I have seen so many people, including myself, struggling with social media addiction. It's one of the biggest issues I believe that's plaguing our generation, leading to all sorts of crazy illnesses and disease and disease in our body. And I feel like it's something that unless we consciously like bring our awareness to it and start to look at ways to reduce our usage of social media and change the way that we relate to it, really key thing I feel like is really important here. Um, then we're going to have some serious issues in the long run. However, I also believe that we get to change the story around it. We get to change the way that we relate to it. We get to change our relationships with it. And we get to use it as the beautiful tool that it was always, I believe, designed to be, um, which is here to equip us to reach the masses with our message, to connect to people on the other side of the world, to see the world through um, a completely different lens and, you know, try on different lenses and see different worldviews. Um, I think it can be an incredibly powerful, incredible tool. I love using social media um, now, and I feel like there's a few key things that I've learned along the way that have really helped me have an empowered relationship with social media and not feel like I'm constantly um, living in this loop of addiction. First thing that I really wanna to touch on is how to take our power, or the only thing I wanna to touch on today is how to take our power back from social media. And I feel like the number one thing or the number one um, principle that I've embodied to be able to enable me to have a really healthy relationship with it is living in the present moment. So what I feel like happened for me and what I see happening for a lot of young people in the world is this idea that social media becomes this version or becomes more real than real life. And I don't mean this metaphorically at all. From my own personal experience, it became like social media was reality. And then what I was living was kind of what I did in between Instagrams, if that like Instagram highlights, does that make sense? So it's kind of like this alternate, like parallel existence where I was just living to post on social media. And it sounds kind of dramatic when I say it out loud. And it kind of is like, if you keep going down that path for long enough, it becomes like a real serious issue. I felt like what it felt like for me was like I was waiting to have a download just so that I could post it on social media. And the chemistry of that, I believe, was that my brain and the, mm, the way that my brain works was that I was becoming addicted to the high, excuse me, and the thrill of posting online so much so that my life became literally centered around all this loop, this feedback loop of waiting for a download or an idea to hit to come through just so I could post it online to get that um, like feedback, recognition, validation, and even just like the dopamine hit of being on social media. We know that Facebook and Instagram have the most addictive flicker rates. If you don't know, go and Google, like they've literally pat patented um, the most addictive flicker rate in the whole wide world for their apps. So we know that quite literally, like physiologically, we're being programmed to be addicted to these apps. I've just purchased these. This is totally not sponsored at all. These are my blue light blockers. Um, part of like filtering out, um, part of like taking back my power for me has been filtering out a lot of blue light exposure in my life. Um, blue light is the light in our that backs our phones. It's in any artificial light. Um, and it's been known and it's been proven now more and more to wreak havoc with different parts of our physiology. So these are a new part of my life and I've just gotten today. So I'm going to start wearing them more and more. Um, but the biggest thing I think, yeah, that I noticed was that I was becoming addicted to not only the dopamine high that was released in my brain when I was posting on social media, but also the feedback that I would get, the neurochemical feedback and the social feedback and connection that I would get um, from posting online. So the likes, the comments, the feedback, whatever. And if you think about, like if you think about living in this continuous loop, it becomes, yeah, eventually it started to feel like social media was reality and then everything I was doing was just my life in between. And so for me, <laughs> the first step that I took, again, coming back to being more present, the first step that I took to really like disengaging and detoxing from social media was getting off it completely and really reintegrating and re-embodying myself in my life as it was. That for me was a really like sticky process of kind of, it was a really like raw process of going, okay, I actually need to look at the things that I'm not looking at. I need to look at the things that feel a little bit icky. I need to look 
I need to get really clear about all the ways that I am trying to run away from my problems and all the areas that I, all the things I'm trying to disengage from, right? So I started getting really honest with myself and really clear about when I wanted to go on social media, what was the thing that I was avoiding, right? So it's like, what's the thing that is coming up in me that I'm trying to suppress by going to my phone? And I've been through phases where social media was like the first thing that I looked at in the morning, like I would roll over, pick up my phone and scroll through Instagram. I am in a phase now and a really beautiful phase where my phone sleeps, my phone sleeps, my phone lives outside my bedroom. I sleep um, in one place and my phone is completely other side of the door. So, and it's on airplane mode. So I can't even like wake up and literally walk to my phone just to check it. I make sure that the first thing that I do every single morning is drop into my body and drop into my physical form and cultivate, this is key, cultivate a sense of aliveness within myself first. What I feel like happened for me and what I feel like happens for so many of us is that we started to, or we've started to, like it's happened really gradually over time, but we've started to seek for our aliveness outside ourselves and we found it in social media. If you look at the six human needs, and Tony Robbins talks a lot about this, but the six human needs, social media um, meets pretty much all six of them. And the theory is, or the science is that anything that meets even three of those needs simultaneously. So we've got certainty, uncertainty, connection, significance, growth, and contribution. Anything that meets even three of those needs simultaneously has the potential to become addictive to human beings, right? So if you think about social media, like I can list off the top of my head, certainty is always gonna be there. We can always count on the fact that we're, we're always gonna have something, new content to scroll through. Uncertainty, we don't know who's gonna comment on our, or like our posts. Like that's the element of like variety that we're getting that our body and like our human is getting from that. Um, connection, obviously, even though it's pseudo connection, I believe that real connections can be built through social media but, and they need to be taken offline to be developed and cultivated properly. I feel like there's an element of like in-person connection that just goes so far beyond what we can cultivate online. And I've met some of my best friends in the world through social media and we haven't yet met in the flesh. There's like two sides to the story there. Um, connection is a big one. Significance, obviously, we can seek for massive validation. Um, we can use social media to create this like illusion of significance in our minds. And contribution facebook's introducing like the give back buttons donation buttons adding like different things to our pages um and growth so we can see literally if we're using facebook for business we can tap in and see um the growth in our followers list so if you go through that list of six human needs it's like there there's no no secret to why we're becoming like so attached and so addicted and what I feel like or what I chose to do when I realized that I was caught in this constant feedback loop of seeking outside myself for validation, not getting the validation that I wanted and going back again and again and again, like drinking from like an empty well almost, like going back and trying to fill up from an empty well, kind of like the image I'm getting is like um, trying to lap up from a puddle. Like it's just, it's never ever going to fill us up and it never ever was going to fill me up or really like fulfill me from the inside out and satiate my desires. Um, the, yeah, the first thing that I did was began to really cult, get present and then cultivate my aliveness inside myself. So the way, the quickest way that I found to do that is really just like dropping in with myself first thing in the morning, getting on my knees, getting in my body and really connecting to that life force that lives within me. And there was layers and a whole journey of disconnection and disconnect and numbness and trauma and illness and whatever that I had to go through to get there. And we'll talk about that embodiment practices in another video. Um, but for me, it was really making sure that I was being and sitting with myself and whatever was there in complete non-attachment, non-resistance, non-judgment first thing in the morning, no matter how hard that seems. The days that it seems the hardest for me were the most important, like it was the time that I really needed to show up for myself. Um, and once I learned and really trained myself to cultivate that sense of aliveness within, it was like I wasn't as tempted to be addicted or seek for it outside myself in my phone. Um, the second thing or the next thing that I wanna talk about is just having a real um, purpose for going on social media. So I found myself like in this sort of, again, this feedback loop of mindlessly scrolling or telling myself that I oh I should probably maybe check out that one thing and then ending up in like a like a rabbit hole 10 years like 10 minutes an hour later down the road 
And what I've come to do now is again, cultivating that sense of aliveness and then making sure that if I'm going to my phone, if I'm going to social media, I have an intention or I have a purpose for going there. And it's like anything in our lives, right? We want to bring that direction. We want to bring that focus. We want to bring that certainty and clarity to everything that we're doing, to our actions. So if I'm going to take an action, I want to know, okay, what's the intention behind this? What's the reason and what's the purpose? What's the, not necessarily what's the outcome because we get to detach from the outcome, but what's the intention? Like, why am I, you know, why am I investing my energy here? Why am I taking the time to check social media right now? Um, and using it as a tool as well to look at the, to help you trigger the things that you're potentially not looking at in your life. I always like, I think about that now, if there is a reason, if I'm, if I do find myself mindless scrolling, going back and really checking in and being like, okay, well, what is it that I'm trying to run away from here? Um, but really having, yeah, having that clear and focused intention and saying, okay, what's the thing that I actually need to do? It might be someone's page that I need to, um, go and I'm trying to think of like a legitimate reason to go on social media, a post that I want to put up. I've already written the post. I would need to go and post this thing. Um, it might be to actively, I don't even like actively engage in Facebook groups anymore unless I actually really feel called to check the time of, of an event, like that sort of thing. I'm very much a believer that we'll see when we're in alignment, when we're in flow, we'll see the thing that we need, see, see the things that we need to see. So there's no need to sort of get caught up in the fear of missing out and that sort of ang anxious like FOMO of like if I'm not on social media every day, um, then something's going to happen and I'm going to miss out on the thing that I really want to see. It's all bullshit and it's all fear and lies and illusion. Our power, and I feel like this is what we need to anchor into and be reminded of, I certainly needed to be reminded of, like this is my the, one of the biggest lessons I've learned in the last couple of months, is that my power doesn't come from my phone. My clients don't come from my phone. My money doesn't come through my from my phone. Um, my validation of my worth does not come through my phone. My connection does not even come through my phone, right? It's all here. It's not there. My phone is a tool that can deliver those things to me and deliver the things to me from the universe that I'm ready to receive, like money, clients, followers, new people, connections, dates, like lovers, whatever. But it's not the thing that's delivering them, if that makes sense. So I feel like we need to reconnect with ourselves as our own source of power, freedom, expression, you know, exhibition, whatever it is in our, I don't know why I said exhibition, whatever it is that we want to create more of in our lives and then take our, take our power away from our phones as those things that bring it to us. I feel like there's maybe a subconscious or subliminal connection, like association that happens when we're constantly being rewarded for checking our phone. And then by checking our phone, we're like, we've just gotten paid. We've seen the money pop up. We've you know, seen the, you know, the love, the relationships, the matches pop up on our dating apps, whatever it is not dissing any of those things. I love social media. I love dating apps. I love being on Facebook. I love being able to interact and engage with the world in that way. And I now know that my power doesn't come from those things. Like my ability to attract a date into my life doesn't come from my phone. It comes from my alignment and my magnetism and my energy. So it's like my, yeah, my power source isn't out there. It's in here. And I feel like that's, for me has been the biggest shift in knowing that yeah everything that i'm seeking for is not coming from outside of me my phone is a tool that's being used to deliver those things to me but it's not the thing and like any addiction i feel like there's a detox period i had a detox period um it was probably three or four weeks where i had my phone on airplane mode all day and i would turn it on for maybe an hour less than that a day um the rest of the time i was like dropping in tapping in with myself embodiment doing embodiment practices Doing breath work, sounding, tantra, movement, EFT, like all of the things and all of the, having all of the feels and all of the emotional release. Um, but the bottom line was my phone wasn't part of it. And I learned that it wasn't my phone that was delivering me the clients. It wasn't my phone that was bringing me the things. It was my energy that was attracting everything to me. And my phone was just a way to do that. Um, seems really obvious, but connecting in real life, turning your phone off completely and really getting out and making those real life embodied in-person connections. Um, trusting that like, it's not how we're perceived online, it's who we are in the world that is our biggest like asset. So I don't wanna be like, my message is not what I say, it's who I am and how I be. And so my real power not doesn't lie in how well I can teach, it lies in 
who I am and the energy that I embody, the essence that I embody. So my magnetism is here, my, my attitude is here, like everything is here. Um, and I actually don't need to show up on social media at all to pull that in, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, using it as a tool, connection, bringing connections in real life, um, really dropping into that space of just being. I don't know why, cause this, I don't know why I'm feeling called to say this because it feels so obvious, but dropping into that space of just being and saying, you know what, like, who I, who am I without doing? Like, literally, if I stripped all this away, if I never posted on social media again, would I still be happy with how I looked? Would I still be happy with how I sounded? Would I still be happy with who I am in the world? And knowing that, like, literally, like, anchoring into fucking real life and grounding ourselves here on the planet and knowing that like this comes first, like keeping the main thing, the main thing, like our lives, who we have in our lives right now, our relationships, the people around us, they're the real, that they, they are real life, that's real life, they're the main thing. Social media is just like, it's a part of that, but it's not the priority, it's not the focus, it's the extension. Um, having a real clear purpose for why we're on social media in the first place, why we're using these apps in the first place, like sitting down with yourself and being like, okay, well, for me, it's like, I, if I'm on social media, I'm sharing something, like I have something to say or I, like I'm selling something, right? So for me, social media is a way to share my message, to create an income, to support my lifestyle. Like it's so I can, you know, give back more and do whatever, but it's not the place that I go to seek for validation. It's not even necessarily anymore the place that I go to feel seen. I feel like I can fully, I fully can cultivate that within myself and I don't need to be on social media. I don't need, um, there's not that sense of like needing to show up anymore. It's just this feeling of like, this is real life. Everything beyond that is an extension. Everything, anything beyond that is maybe a little bit of a bonus. Um, but really like being fully present and anchored into our lives. Um, and then letting social media be just like this, a part of it, not the whole course, not the main course. It's like a little appetizer. It's like an entree, not even, cause it doesn't come first. It's like a side dish. Social media is a side dish. There you go. And it's like our lives in the main course, but yet yeah, keeping our focus on being embodied in the present real life is real life. Um, yeah, social media is not real life. Yeah. Yeah. It's really important. I feel like it's really important. It's been amazing for me to implement these things in my life and see and just feel the difference. Um, feel how, and I can feel it now when I'm giving my power away versus feeling fully empowered in myself. Um, and it's just made such a difference for the way that I live my life. Keep the main thing the main thing. I love you guys and I'll see you really soon. If you like this video, subscribe. Head over to my website. <laughs>